Okay, so how to pronounce your name? Mama? Mama, yes. Mama La. Yes. Oh, okay. That's an interesting name. Where where, where did that come from? West Africa. I was born in Africa, and I come here to went out um, back in 2006. And yeah, and it was a really good thing to do it. I come down here and I start working. Mama La in the building. All right, so this is a long time coming. We 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 hooked up with each other in the background to get a little bit of information. But you would like to come more and to share your experience with Live Enterprise. If I'm not mistaken, that's the same company that Mark Mark Stewart recently left because of situations. And I think that same company reached out to another YouTuber to express their their side of the story of what happened. Uh, Mark came back on to the show to the rebuttal or respond to that letter that was sent out. And now I'm not sure what's going on. I believe he's happy with another company and all like that. But uh, you came in a, a little while back. The conversation that we had and the text messages that you that you sent Wow, it, it sounds like a hell of a story. You say you've been there for almost three years, and in your words, you said you got robbed so many times during those three years. So let me start off by asking, like, during the three years, why you stayed so long if they was treating you so bad? Yes, hi, good afternoon. And again, my name is Mama. Like I, you say, that I, I work with for this company for almost three years. And uh, that was the thing I was about to say. Like, I know when I say my side of a story, a lot of people will ask, like, why you stay there for so long? When you look at, I'm the kind of person who just don't like to change the, the, the job all the time. Most of the time when I work with some any places, I stay there like for like a, a years and years and years. And uh, the second reason, remember like uh, back in 2021, like the trucking business was really good. So I was, to be honest, I was making some good money and uh, I was working really hard. I could stay on the road for like four months before going home. So I was making money at the same time they was robbing me. And I feel like if every time I just tell myself like, okay, this time is going to be over. Like when we, I pay this one off and then everything is going to be fine. And for like a few, I don't know how to say, like for like working there for so long. And I feel like I got trapped there. Like, I don't know. I was kind of scary. Like if I lose my job, I have a family to take care of. Her. It's going to be really tough for me to deal with my financial. So that's the reason that I stay with them. But at one point, like it was really enough when they just refused to pay my paycheck. That's when like I decided, no, I cannot do this anymore. Like you see, you saw the text message and I asked the guy like why you didn't pay me. They say, oh, you're going to get your paycheck on a Monday. And I had a law at that time. I say, okay, I'm going to wait until I get my law, my paycheck on Monday. Then I will go ahead and just do delivery. And then I didn't, still, until now, I didn't see my paycheck. So I stayed there for so long. The first reason was like, I like to stay my workplace for, I don't like to quit my job. And then the second thing, I had, I had like a lot of bills to pay. I just don't want to lose my job. Well, I see it's going through the test messages that you sent me. It's, it seems as though that they kind of stringed you along. And this is towards the end of you deciding to leave, right? You, yeah. You, you had a load, and I guess you, you looked into your account. Your money wasn't there, and they kept stringing you along by saying, oh, we have issues, something going on. We sent it to the wrong account or whatever the case, and your money just wasn't there. And then I guess you and him came to a compromise. Okay, well, I'll bring the load as long as you send me my money. You did that. You left the keys, and they still played you. They didn't pay you. They didn't give you your money. They, they said something to the effect that we paid zero, because your last statement is negative. They said, stop bothering us. I don't know how you can expect to hold hostage load for three days or abandon it in the middle of the street and expect to be paid. You delivered the load, 
right? Or what what happened with that little statement right there? Okay, yeah, like um, they always are trying to lie because of the place I parked the truck, that's the place I then park my truck every every time I go to New York. That's where I live, Bronx, New York, every time. And when you look at the, the, the places that I park my truck to, I make sure I park in front of some camera in case if somebody breaks my windows. It's a really safe place to park. So that's the first thing. So that was uh, March 7, uh, March, the, the week of March 7, March, because of my son's birthday was uh, March 7. So I asked my dispatcher so to send me home. So I'm going to just go ahead and just buy some stuff for my son and then get back on the road on Monday. And then I know I have a lot of things to do. And I was like, no, I called back my dispatch. Okay, can you give me a loan Friday? So I will go, I'm going to just pick up the load and then spend like a Friday again home. So probably like a Saturday night, I'm going to start driving, doing my delivery on Monday. Before that, when I asked my, uh, my dispatch that one, I got a call from the guy you see, like his name is Max, the one who texted me, he called me on a confidence call with another lady, name is, the lady's name is Simone, Simone, which work on our dead HR. They asked me, why are you going home? Like you just went to, you went home last week. I said, I didn't go home last week. I just came to do delivery. On, make a delivery on, in, the, in New York on, on last week, but I didn't go home. And straight I went back. So I'm going home to just do my, like buy some stuff for my, my son. And they were like, oh, okay. Because they have a uh, dispatcher. Sorry for that noise. They have another driver, a uh, dispatcher, who left the company. So they saw, like, uh, that dispatcher tell me something about, so, like, uh, if uh, he trying to tell me to leave the company, to come work with him, on, and stuff like that. And I was so strict with them. I said, no, nobody will decide on my place to what to do. I'm not planning to do anything. Honestly, I was not even planning to leave that time before like I, they 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 hold my paycheck right and they say okay everything is fine now like uh, like you've been work with us for so long we are here to help you if there is any issue just call us back and then we will help you i said okay then i went home the um, the the eight was on the thursday march march and then a friday march 9 and i went out to pick up my delivery when I pick up my delivery, and then most of the time, like every time I get my paycheck on Friday, and I check my, my balance, I see I didn't get paid. And I call everybody. I call um, the account team. They refuse to answer my phone call. And I call my new dispatch. He didn't answer the phone call. And I text him. I say, okay, I'm loaded. He say, okay, he tends to drive safe. And I was like, I send him text message. I say, like, I try to call you, but no one answered. I didn't get the reply. I call like, like five or six times in account team. No one answered the phone. Then I stopped. I send a message. I say, okay, I didn't get my paycheck. I just pick up the load and I'm heading to Alabama. And I had like only $4 left on my bank account at that time, or probably $3. And I was like, how, if I, I go all the way down, how am I going to even I don't have no money? And I say, okay, I'm not moving the, the load until I get paid. So when they saw that text message, they called Max. Max called me right away. So I know what kind of, what kind of person is, is that guy. And I refused to answer his phone, phone call because I want him to text me so I can save it for Rico. So that's when he starts texting me. say like, oh, okay, just do the delivery. You got paid. But that's what he said on the first text message. You got paid. You will receive your money on Monday. I said, well, because I know he's, he's a liar. I said, well, no, okay, just uh, wait until Monday then. When I get my paycheck, I will start driving to Alabama to do delivery. That's That's fair. So, that that's fair. And that that's a fair. Yeah. That's that's a fair assessment. Pay me my money and and I will start driving. If if I don't get my money, then I'm not start driving. The the whole point of the matter is it's the contract. I drive. Yeah. I get paid. If 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 you don't pay me, what I'm looking like driving? Why why yeah. should I and why should I drive if you ain't paid me yet? You're, yeah. you're messing you're messing with my money and you're sitting there saying. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll pay you. I'll pay you. I'll pay you. Just, just get our load there. But you obviously, you just came to the fruition that you knew that you wasn't going to get paid. So what? You just decided to just stay put, and then they decided to send somebody out there to to, to recover the truck. 
Yeah. And then they, they call, like, somebody called me and I explained everything to that person. And they even told that person my truck was broke down. I tell him, like, my truck was not broke down. They just refused to, to pay me. And yeah. as on the text message, you see, like, what, uh, what he was saying, like, don't do that to your son. I don't know if it was kind of, like, some trait or something like that. Think about your son or stuff like that. So I got a little bit scared. I don't know if he's going to send somebody to do something bad to me. Then I give them the truck. I got really scared because I don't know him well, like, the people who can just grab your money while you're working, he's, he can do anything. So I got scared because he said they know my uh, my address on the text and so you can see it. But he was saying like they're going to send the police or something like that. But I don't know who, who he was going to send to me and then do something bad to me. So and then I just returned the truck and then I was like, I don't want any problem. And uh, it was a really tough moment. I didn't even make my, that much money. And then I don't want to add any other problem. And I was trying to contact any anybody like uh, who can help me, like a lawyer, stuff like that. I don't find anybody. So and then I start from zero. Now, thanks God, I'm with another company, which like I'm doing really good now. Well, I was I was talking to several drivers and I always ask the question like, bro, why do y'all go to these places financially strapped? And I come to realize that the previous company put you guys in that position in the first place. This guy is going back and forth with you in the text message. And it just sounds again to me that he was just stringing you along. You, you, you said in one text message that you don't know your bank did not see the payment. Of course you could see that you didn't get paid. He's saying that, Oh, Maybe that's a mistake. Uh -huh. You said something to the fact that I knew you was not going to pay the money. He says, we paid. You showed him a screenshot of your bank account that the money is not there. He's playing stupid. Like, I don't understand. I cannot understand. We paid you your money, but the money is not there. He's playing stupid again. Like, what's the problem? He needs to check. Yeah, it's just... It just sounds so convoluted that this man is just playing with you at this point. Hold on. What's going on, guys? I just want to stop the video right here right quick. If you guys made it this far into the video and you guys like what you're hearing, go ahead and hit that like button for me, bro. Hit that like button. It's free. It's free. If you made it this far into the video, man, make sure you hit that like button. It's right up under the video, man. And if you guys like more content like this, consider, okay? Y'all got two options. Well, one, but two options. You can either subscribe for the channel for more. And if you really want to rock with me and get the videos early, make sure you join join the channel all right shout outs to all my members of the channel that rocks with your man thank you very much now let's get back to the show and then when they came and got their truck and everything now he gets bold and say oh well we didn't pay you because your your last statement was negative stop bothering us like bro what my money is not important. Yeah. I, I can't I, I can't call and ask about my money. That's bothering y'all? Man, that's that's and, that's and, crazy. And the good thing is like when they hear the Jesus story, whatever they're gonna say, I got all the proof on me. I got like some like a backing day. This is the, the last time the the, the the moment that I left. That's the only that story I'm telling you right now. So when we are going back to like a back to January from November, from November until to January of the November 2021 to January or February 2022, that's the craziest one because they give me some truck also. I don't know if we're going to, we finish with that part, like we're going to start another one. There's a lot of things going on. Like I can tell you like these people, they rob me. It's more than even like 18,000. Sometimes they just, when I, I'm working some Friday and they just block my paycheck. And I, when I start calling, they say, they come back and they, oh, you all ask for like 8,000. I said, where did 8,000 come from? They put some historical back there. Boom. We work on it. And the next time they come out another 6,000, another 6,000. It was a lot. I mean, as of like last year, I mean, this year, like uh, March on this year, when I left for uh, the story that I told you, I wasn't enough. I couldn't do anything. Man. I mean, I was kind of like, okay, let me just go ahead and do something else. If I'm not finding a job, I'm going to just sit down. Am I going to be homeless 
or something like that, but I would just quit. I say I'm not gonna accept it anymore. You you, you I, get I with a, all that. You you get with a company that you think that's gonna that's gonna treat you right and gonna treat you well, only to get with the only to get with the company to treat you guys like garbage, man. And that's not and that's not cool. And it it, it, it happens. It it happens to the best of us. And I was I was with my previous company for just about the same amount of time. And what I thought I was doing was giving them my loyalty, pretty much. I, and I gave it to them. I, I gave them my loyalty, only only to realize that they, they don't give a shit about loyalty. So here, yeah. here, I read that sometime in December of 2023, this is last year, you had a truck repair that was over $3,000. You paid that three thousand dollars out of your own pocket. They cut my paycheck for four straight weeks. I was not. I was. I was not. I was making zero dollars. I have all that proof here. Zero dollars. And that truck. That truck is two, truck two nine nine is a Volvo. That was the baddest truck they have on the reality because I drove that truck back in. All the problems started with that truck first. And back in 2021, 20, uh, yeah, it was a 2021. Um, the end of a 2021, when they give me that truck, the day I went to pick up that truck, and after one week, the truck got broke down. Then I went back, I take a flight back from uh, Roanoke, uh, going back to um, the, the Chicago. They gave me another truck and say like, oh, okay, sorry, we're gonna give you another truck so you can you can keep working, right? When I went back to the Bolingbrook, Illinois, Chicago area. There was a guy named uh, Daniel who was uh, like okay. the, who was uh, their uh, maintenance manager. I don't know if it was man manager, but he was uh, like working on the maintenance. His name is uh, Daniel. He left. He, he doesn't work with them anymore. He's the one telling me that wow, they give you this truck. This truck, like I never see any bad truck than this one, man. Every time this truck go to the shop, right? And the truck stay on the shop dealer for like a month. When I came back. To start working, uh, when the truck got, when I, I, I started working again in February, they start charging me for that truck when the truck was sitting in the shop under the, the dealer every week for like 1200 and 500 every week for like more than a month, more than probably like almost two months, I believe. I'm not really sure like how many weeks it is, but like it's almost two months, 1250, 1250, they charge me every single week. They add everything together and just start taking from my paycheck. Well, the the one that I went to pick up in the Chicago, I was paying that one also. I have all that proof. So when they trying, they start charging me again for the one in December 2023, right? So I tell them that okay, you guys been charging me like a double payment most of the time when I was working twenty beginning of uh, 2022. And they say I, I am a liar. That day, Max called me also, the manager, the guy who was texting me on my phone, and a liar. He said, I never did that. And I said, okay, if I never did, I have a proof. They told me to send me, send them on the, the proof, so they're going to give my money back. And uh, the, the other day, he was on the phone also, his name is Simone. And I sent all the messages to Simone. She came back with me, and she said, oh... Okay, you was right. We make some mistake, but some places you made a mistake also. So we're gonna just uh, give you credit. They didn't even reimburse my money that time. They said they're gonna give me credit for like a four, I believe it's like four thousand or something. But they didn't give me that money. They just put somewhere and make some other deduction plan and tell me like I'll owe them some money on the other side. So they're gonna just reduce to that amount of money. I'm like, wow, it doesn't make no sense. And Max was telling me also that time, okay, this happened in, since 2021. Why do you want to bring that up? I said, I don't want to bring that up. I was trying to call everybody to fix it. Nobody was helping me. So now you tell me that I never pay double payment for the truck. I send you proof. And he's telling me like that that was so old. And uh, yeah, and the, that was so old. It's my money. Like even if it's 10 years, I should get my money back. He said, okay, that's fine. But yeah, it's hard for us to go back and check everything. Blah, 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 blah. And I went back. I checked everything. I said, I sent a message to Simona, who's the like, HR. I said, Simona, like you give me like a 4,000 and some on the credit here. But it's more than that. Yeah, because you only took like a probably like a few payments and just you give me credit. There was a, a lot back then. I didn't get to those money back. 
She didn't reply. For a week, I call, 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 and she came back. She said, oh, sorry, I was on a vacation. Okay, I'm going to check everything again, and I'm going to get back. She didn't reply until a week. I call her again. She didn't reply. She came back. She said, oh, sorry, I was sick this week. That's why I didn't get a chance to um, reply. I said, okay, that's fine, but take your time. I just want money. A few more weeks again, I started calling her again. She didn't answer the phone. So I call my dispatch. I say, oh, my, I, I, his name is Logan. I say, Logan, did the, uh, Simona didn't work on uh, the office this morning? And he told me like, oh, he, she's working. She, he asked me what happened. I say, I've been called, trying to get him on the phone. It's been a month now. When she comes, she says sometimes she was on a vacation. Sometimes she says she's sick, but now she's not answering my phone call. And he told me that, okay, let me just go ahead and ask her to call you back. Since then, she didn't call me back until March, March her when he, yeah. she was on the phone with Max again. She didn't reply any of my message, nothing. I have all proof. I have a text, like email, sending to her. Whatever she say, I have everything with me. I can take all the screenshots and send it to you. Wow. So until now, I didn't get pay for that one. So that truck on the back, uh, um, the, the same truck on 20, 29, when I got back, I came back from vacation and I asked them like to give me a brand new truck this time. They say, okay, we have a 299, we fix everything. I, start, I take the truck. The first day I take the truck, truck got some issue. I was about to say, okay, let me just go home. And uh, if I found that, if you find like another good truck, a brand new truck or like any truck which is really good, I'm going to come back. And uh, the, the the guy, uh, David, who worked on uh, maintenance also, told me like, oh, we might going to have uh, some truck in a few weeks. So when the truck comes in, we're going to give it to you. But I'm going to let the, the recruiter know so she can go give you a call. And uh, I start driving. Every week, I go to the shop, fix that truck on my packing, right? And then uh, finally, the truck was not moving. And my dispatch said, like, oh, mama, like, you are a hard worker. Is anything we can do? Like, just call them and see if you can get find, like, a, some nice truck so you can keep working because you are a hard worker, but you get stuck every week. Every week, you spend, like, you lose a day or, like, five, two days to fix a truck. And I called that uh, David, and uh, he told me to call uh, Elena, who's the recruiter. And I called um, the recruiter. She's not answer the phone all the time. Until I came back with my dispatch again. I told my dispatcher, whose name is Logan. Logan, it's really hard for me right now because I'm not even making no money. Every week, my truck got broke down. And all money that I make it, I put it in, in the truck. And I'm trying to call Elena. She's not answering my phone call also. And he said, okay, hold on. I think he called, them. He called her. And she called me back. And I said, Elena, your um, baby said to call you since like a two, three weeks ago. And I was trying to reach you, but I can't, I can't get you on the phone. And uh, she was saying that she was on a vacation also, right? And then she said, okay, yeah, we have uh, some truck coming like uh, next week. Uh, so if you want, we can give you that. I said, yeah, for real, I want that one. And then when that truck came in, I went to pick up that truck. The old truck that I drop it now, that's when they try to charge me for that truck for like over like 3000 again. They went to change oil, change the bumper, change so many things on that truck and put on me. I mean, they repair all, all this truck and put on me. I think it's they put like probably like 3000 or probably like I can't even remember. There's a lot of going on with this company. I mean, I wish I can have somebody who can help me to sue them so I can get all my money. I have all proof with me, all of them. Anything I'm saying right here on the phone, I got everything on my email or text message. Because finally, like I start doing that, send them text message or either uh, or email so I can have a proof in case if they say like, oh, this is this not happen. So I will show them what really happened. I have everything. Well, it's, it's a good thing that you, that you decided to keep all the receipts, man. It's always... It's always a good thing to, to have some type of proof because these black op companies, they, they could pretty much say and do anything that they want. And they they feel like you guys are like second class citizens and they'd be like, OK, yeah, our, our word is 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 more substantial than what you got. But you got everything. And I see it that that whoever you was talking to was very very disrespectful to you and again they also they was they was playing with you they was gaslighting you all like that i'm i'm yeah honestly i'm 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 surprised you you well no i'm not i'm not i take that back i'm not surprised because i i i didn't experience 
what you have went through as a company of that magnitude, but I have experience of being with a company that I thought that was that was pretty good. And and like you, I I didn't want to jump ship either. I I got bills just like everybody else got bills. I'm I'm a little bit older now. I, I don't feel like jumping from company to company. So I I I, I gave in to to make it work and it sounds as though you you tried to do the same thing all the way up until the end same thing with me all the way up until the end it just came to a point that we just couldn't take it anymore you know what i'm saying yeah but, yeah but when somebody messes with your money and and they're gaslighting you to the fact that trying to trying to do things to benefit them and you're trying to be like look i'm in a bind i need my money and they're not giving it to you, then yeah, you you got to step up. And regardless of how long you've been there, you got to leave. And it's just unfortunate yeah. that it's it's unfortunate that you guys are not able to get substantial help, especially from black op companies. So I, I talked to a lot of drivers that that tried to get a lawyer for the lawyer to come back and tell them, oh well, it's nothing that we can do. But, but, but they, right, it got to be something. They they didn't pay me. They they. They took my money and gave me some BS excuse about it. So you know, it's it's unfortunate that you guys are in situations with those type of companies. And I I hope for the best. But what is Mama La? What what is your whole moral to this story? I know that was like three. What was this about three years ago now uh, that you that you that you have left? Well, March two, in 20, well, yeah, you left last year, so you only been with the company for. Not this year. Oh, you left this year. Oh, okay, so you yeah, left, like in March, March, March of twenty four. Yeah. But you've been with them what, since February twenty first, though. February twenty twenty one, though, right? Twenty twenty one, yeah. So that's what this year. So twenty one, twenty two. So like two, two and some change, right? Almost, almost two years. One, like, like, yeah, almost. And again, like, and again, it wasn't like that you you went in there and you stayed for like a couple of months and all like that. You you actually went in there and you gave them the benefit for the benefit of the doubt for at least two years. And and yeah. for, for them to come back and, and and treat you the way they treated you, that's it's not cool. I kind of feel the same way because I've been with my previous company. It was like three years. And then a couple of months ago, we came to that brick in the wall so that we can't come to a compromise or go around. And it 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 is what it is or was. So this 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 is a hell of a story, man. I, and and I appreciate you coming yeah. on. I appreciate you coming on sharing it again. What's what's your moral to this story, man? Because it sounds as though you you with a good company now that you're driving for. So what's what's your whole outtake of of the story with live enterprise liv enterprises i would tell anybody to not go to this company man they will rob you and as a, like a black person and as you say like a second citizen thing like coming from africa they know they can't rob you nothing you can do it and they would they would find a way to rob you anytime and my mom it's like it's would was like a really bad experience for me because I was just struggling until I have to take a credit from everywhere, ask for credit, begging people to give me money. So I can't send my wife and my three children to Africa so they can stay there. I was feeling so bad. Sometimes we didn't have like even money to buy food, stuff like that. Finally, I signed to my wife and like the thing is like that. But if I'm by myself here, everything will be fine. So I can stay a day, two days without eating. That's fine. But at least if they went to Africa, so I can try to send them like some money. They, life is a little bit cheaper down there. So I can decide to go ahead and do start with another company. That's what I did. And it worked. Like I'm planning to bring them back probably next next month. But with LIV, I won't tell, I won't tell anybody, even my enemy to go work with for that company. They are really bad. Damn it, man! Yeah, you say you would not. Yeah, you say you would not suggest this to your worst enemy, huh? Well, bro. Nah, nah, because, no, I won't. For real, 
Well, bro, I appreciate you coming on to the uh, podcast, man, to share your experience, man. Thank you very much. Guys, if you guys are interested in coming in and sharing your stories like my guy, Mama La, you can do that. You can hit me up on the Gmail. That's Lockout Men Podcast Guest at gmail.com. Leave your story and uh, we can go from there and I will reach out to you. Mama La, again, thank you very much for coming on to the podcast and yeah. sharing your story, man. And I wish you much success in the future, bro. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And uh, I wish you the best also. And thank you for your help and for the, all, the, all the drivers. That that's the way the good thing. Thank you. If it wasn't for us nasty old truck drivers out here on the road, you wouldn't have none of y'all shit. This video was brought to you by a truck and a truck driver.